So our first presenter for this section is Elise Gowan. Elise is the Earth and Mineral Sciences Librarian at Penn State University. She holds a Master's of Library and Information Science and her research interests include virtual reality, science communication and digital storytelling. You're very welcome today Elise, thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, so I'm here today to talk about immersive experiences as hosted in a STEM library. And I want to talk a little bit about the libraries as a virtual reality space and why we found that the libraries in particular were well suited for hosting VR and being a place for our students and faculty to have virtual reality experiences. What we found is that um, the libraries are seen across the university as an open and neutral space. Uh, they're welcoming to all disciplines and expertise levels. And um, in particular, we, we decided to explore virtual, virtual reality as a way to build on our continuing status as a, a space where tech resources are made available to students who don't have the opportunity to access these resources on their own. So this is part of a ongoing process of making tech resources available that includes things like 3D printing, as well as multimedia studios. Um, in particular, we also felt that the library was in a really good place to look at virtual reality programs as a form of collections. Uh, this is something that I think often isn't considered as widely is the fact that all virtual reality programs ultimately are ephemeral material that should be preserved and made available to others. And our experience is that right now, because it's such a new format, um, the way it's made available to others, made findable to others and preserved is very ad hoc and dependent on the program and who developed it. And the libraries were really interested in exploring what we can do to collect and preserve these programs. Uh, and finally, this was particular to Penn State as a location, but we have 24 campuses spread across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, and we wanted to make virtual reality a, a potentially available in all of them. And the question became, where would a good space be that's housed in all of these campuses, which range in size from very large to very small? Um, and campuses, one thing they all do have in common is libraries. So they're a great space to kind of be a potential host for virtual reality. And the virtual reality hasn't spread to all of our uh, campuses yet, uh, but the libraries could be a potential space where all those um, eventually do develop. Um, so looking into sort of how we got into this, uh, this first began in 2017 when I was approached by a geography faculty member who was looking for a potential space to um, let his students experience VR. And what he found is he had his own lab space where he was developing virtual reality, but the lab by its nature is kind of exclusive. It's not open. It's not something where students can kind of drift in freely, regardless of whether um, the faculty member and his teammates were in at the time. So he wanted something more open, more available, and the libraries were a good solution to that. Um, we ended up deciding to assess, to create a needs assessment across all of our university disciplines to see what interest there was in virtual reality. We found a wide array of interest, uh, but especially uh, concentrated among the STEM fields. Um, and it really did vary. Uh, and some, some of the fields that we found were most interested were the earth sciences and the health sciences. Um, but I think what we found was really the most important thing is identifying potential collaborators um, and people who would uh, be interested in specifically working with the library on these things. So once we assessed that there was indeed a need that could be met here, we began with a pilot program of two libraries on our main University Park campus. Uh, the end result were opening two different uh, virtual reality spaces. Um, the Sidewater Commons, which was housed in our main library, uh, which is Petit Library. Um, this was where a lot of the health sciences work uh, is being done. And so the library here, the Library Virtual Reality Center, uh, mainly focused on different health science programs uh, like ShareCare, which was already referenced a little earlier. 
the second one was housed in the Earth and Mineral Sciences Library, which is where I work. And this is a branch library on campus. And we actually opened our VR lab within an existing multimedia studio that we had. Um, so essentially it's one single space that have, serves dual purposes as a multimedia studio where students can come in and record video. And it's also a VR space as well. So uh, we didn't need to create a brand new space for this. We were able to uh, make it work dual purposes. So we've got a number of different scientific programs that we've developed uh, in-house or found that we can make use of. And probably the most significant of these is our geosciences virtual field trips. And there's a number of reasons why virtual field trips as opposed to in-person field trips to see different rock formations and geological um, phenomena uh, why this is actually really well suited for a VR format. Uh, we, what we found is, in particular, it serves a lot of uh, needs for different groups that have traditionally been somewhat locked out of the geosciences because they couldn't physically travel to certain spaces. Uh, we felt that it would be more accessible to low-income students, students who don't have the opportunity to do um, long-distance travel. We have distance learners across our campus as well. So this brings uh, the ability to explore a particular location to everyone. And um, we also found that in certain cases, it enhanced beyond the experience um, that was available to anyone. And this was particularly true of the um, of what we're looking at here. This is part of a broader program that was developed uh, working with a popular destination that students used to go to in person. It was recently closed down though due to um, highway expansion in the area. So it went from being something that everyone could go to if they were at least physically present in the area to something nobody could access. So this became a way to see the same location uh, but in a virtual format uh, where otherwise would be inaccessible. And we were able to do extensive uh, surveys with students about their satisfaction with these ge geoscience virtual field trips. And we found that students actually expressed a higher level of satisfaction with the VR experience than the in-person experience. Uh, and the learning outcomes were essentially the same. Students had the same um, uh, accomplishments with both that they, that they achieved. So we were really pleased with that outcome. Some of the other uh, programs that have been developed in-house uh, within our College of Earth and Mineral Sciences are um, a exploration of a volcano in Iceland that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, uh, but you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, this is um, the external view of the volcano. Above, uh, at the very top, is the internal view of the volcano, volcano and we have several faculty member who went to this volcano with LIDAR equipment and were able to develop a model of the volcano plume. And what it offers is a number of different ways to explore it, um, expanding it, moving up and down within the volcano, uh, measuring distance and uh, volume. So there's a lot of different ways to explore a space that you would not otherwise be able to explore. And that's one of the reasons we felt that the Earth Sciences in particular is really well suited to uh, virtual reality experiences. Beyond that though, um, 3D simulations of phenomenon are really uh, relevant to Earth Sciences in particular. Um, this is especially true in modeling impacts of climate change, things that have not yet come to pass, but will in the future, uh, possibly. Um, so we've been developing different models around that, and there's a number of universities that have also created their own uh, simulations of what will happen in the event of severe ocean, ocean acidification, as an example. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the Earth exploding. This is another simulation of phenomena uh, that can be found in the universe sandbox, which is a way to explore um, smashing planets into each other. A lot of uh, fun ways uh, students can explore what um, the physical properties of, of these experiences would be. I also just want to touch briefly on sort of the experience of hosting virtual reality in the library and some of the uh, nitty gritty of what we do on a daily basis. Um, in terms of 
the space and how we manage it and handle scheduling. Um, we opened these in 2018 um, with different approaches. Our library was open to the public as a whole. The different, uh, the separate Sidewater Commons library was only open for kinesiology students. And we found that it was very successful to be fully open to the public. We were concerned about getting slammed with people and instead we had a steady stream of users that was very consistent. We were very satisfied with that. We make use of uh, the library program SpringShares LibCal to make reservations. Uh, so it's a fully automated process where students can make their own booking and we just need to approve them. Um, and as long as there's a 24 hour advance notice, we are able to accommodate any students. Uh, we were very concerned about safety and uh, security, but what we found is uh, some basic guidelines in terms of um, not leaving the lab unattended, not bringing food and drink in was enough to get us by. Um, so in general, what we found is we, we started out a little bit strict and then we've uh, relaxed our standards a lot as students have been very respectful of the space. Uh, as you can imagine, things really shifted during COVID. Um, we had to close our virtual reality center until fall of 2021. Uh, there were a number of staffing challenges that arose as a result of this. Um, and just in general, the demand really went way down. Uh, what we found as an adaptation is we've chosen to uh, start circulating tethered VR equipment. What we have in our libraries is HTC Vibes. And so we've started circulating extra HTC vibes as things that students can take to their own home. Um, in terms of things that work for the virtual reality field trips that I've talked about, uh, we've started administering all of those to students through Oculus Quests that they can take home. Um, so it's moved from a centralized space where people work more towards something where we share the equipment uh, people need to use at home. And finally, I want to just talk briefly about the challenges with collections, because I think that's especially something that uh, needs to be considered more in terms of the long term preservation of materials. We have made use of a number of different kinds of programs within our VR space, everything from things that were developed in house in our university to things developed at other universities uh, and commercial products as well. And what you're going to be able to find for your field is going to vary a lot on a lot of different factors around the field. What we've generally found is the more lucrative it is to have training in a field, the more advanced the um, programs will be. So the health sciences field has generally has much more options in commercial products than uh, the geography field does. So that's uh, something to consider. But especially with these in-house developed uh, university programs, there's a lot of things that are very useful. What they are challenging in is um, finding them and making sure that they're able to be preserved long-term. Uh, and this is where I think libraries especially can start offering solutions. What we're trying to do uh, is encourage use of existing institutional repositories, which most universities have. Um, and I think the benefit of this is it avoids siloing 3D materials from other things. It's another thing that's been produced in a university setting. So it's something that usually will be um, a valid uh, thing to upload to an institutional repositories. Uh, uh, but in addition, we're interested in exploring the idea of federated repositories between universities, which will allow sort of a broader meta database of uh, virtual reality programs to eventually take form. And I know there's definitely some universities like the Oklahoma University of Oklahoma that are exploring that right now. So that's something to keep an eye on as well. Uh, but long term preservation is definitely a concern and um, I would encourage people to consider that when they are uh, developing programs or uh, acquiring programs. So thank you. Thanks, Elise. That was um, a really fascinating talk and I love seeing all those in-house examples um, and I particularly loved the way that you highlighted the long-term preservation issues and things like that. 